Thank you, Felton. Thank you for going. Uh, sorry you guys who couldn't make it, didn't get to go, but it was a wonderful conference. Um, we had we had over 900 men, 920 something men. We filled that church, every seat in that church was filled. You can ask people that went, they know there was a lot of extra room. But it didn't. It didn't matter. It didn't. Nobody complained about it. It was. It was the most joyful day of, of 900 plus men that I can remember. I mean, they were very. It was. It was just filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the speakers were outstanding. Um, the organization, St. Patrick's, the, the the parish, was outstanding with their volunteers, with all of their, uh, their, staff. I mean, they just welcomed us like it was our parish. It was. It was incredible. Um, this there's miracle after miracle that happened there the day we're gonna. Some of you are gonna get up and talk about that. Um, we had over a hundred and ten parishes represented at this conference, the most we've ever had. We had 22 priests that helped serve the mass. We, we needed about 40 because we didn't finish reconciliation. Um, but still, as people that got to go to reconciliation, I, I hope got to get you know the ones that needed it got to do it. So. Um, but just, I can't thank all the volunteers enough. We had most, a lot of the volunteers came from Good Shepherd. Uh, David Brockman led our greeters. We had uh, Roland led our our parking. Um, who uh, I'm trying Don, to think. Don. Don. Led yeah. the food. Yeah, Don, Don led our food. Uh, the ushers were led by, who else? Phil. Phil? Phil was, yeah, Phil was there. <laughs> Phil did a lot of yeah. Phil, 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 Phil actually ran half of the food already. Okay, all right, excellent. But the, the, the thing is, you guys stepped up and helped, and that's what makes that conference work because of all the volunteers that we have. Uh, you know, it can't happen without you guys. So thank you, we can't, we can't thank you enough for what you do. You do change people's lives. I'm telling you, we, we, we get our, we did we got our feedback from the conference, and and 95% of it's very positive. But you can hear they're talking about um, they, this conference helped get them back into the faith. This conference helped my marriage. This conference, uh, you know, uh, just made me a better Christian, engaged Catholic man. I mean, it, it, it. So that's what that conference is about. It's it's to kind of get people jacked up get people back into their faith more engaged in their faith and i think we did i think it happened the holy spirit was definitely with us so um with that i just want to does anybody want to talk about the conference and share some of your experience about the conference neil uh, fantastic and as he mentioned there are a lot of volunteers but i'd like to propose a standing ovation to the gentlemen that were in the leadership roles. That's Rick, Bob, Kyle, and all the people that he mentioned. So, here we go. Some hero is Ralph. Ralph's always <laughs> filming everything. But we already got all the videos on the conference up. So if you want to, if you weren't there, go to our website. You can watch every, every talk. Um, if you want, Father Paco was awesome, uh, uh, Patrick Coffin was awesome, but the, the big hit, I thought, it just my opinion, was, was uh, Bishop Burns. Bishop Burns knocked it out of the park. He, yeah. he changed my perception of him dramatically in that 30 minute talk. He was just, the way, uh, just what he said, and you could tell he's a, a really true man of God. He, it, it, Go watch it if you haven't watched it. Go back, go to the website and watch it. What, what uh, is the website? It's CatholicBrothersForChrist.com. CatholicBrothersForChrist. Yeah. Yeah. Dot com. Or, uh, huh? Know, dot, com. dot com. CatholicBrothersForChrist.com. All the thanks to Ralph and Ralph's been working probably day, out every hour of the day of the last two weeks <laughs> to put these videos up. Uh, so. Thank you, Ralph. Thank, Thank you, Ralph. Ralph. So, all right, anybody else? Bob. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, thanks for, again, thanks for everybody and all the help. Um, 
Father, if you uh, were at the conference you got to, and you didn't go to Mass at 8 o'clock in the morning, you need to hear his homily. And Ralph has that up. And the leadership team had a Mass Friday evening, and his homily there was... Father Mitch. Father Mitch. What did I say? Yeah, I just said okay. Father Mitch. Father Mitch. Oh. His homily on Friday, you need to go watch that because that was just absolutely fantastic. So it's not the speakers. It's the group. It's the fellowship of men that bring it. And this is um, not a conference. It's a movement. And our goal is to get, um, you know, we had 110 parishes and 900 men. And we're all, hey, this is great. But we live in a town, Metroplex, with 8 million people and like 2 million Catholics. So 900 is scratch, not scratching the surface. Think about 100 uh in 10 parishes, what if 50 of them were like Good Shepherd and had 50 plus coming every year? Um, that would be 5,000. And if the other 50, we could get 25 from each one of those parishes, that'd be 7,500 people. And that's, that's our kind of vision. How do we grow this thing next year, uh, or this fall, October 19th, is Experitus, which is at St. Mount St. Mount St. Michael's. And uh, it's only limited to 300 people, so it'll be cut off, and there is no extra space there. And then our <clears throat> big conference next year is already set. Put your, if you don't have this in your phone, put it in there right now, April 25th, and put it on your calendar, April 25th, 2020. And we're at St. Francis of Assisi's in Frisco. It's only... On the tollway from here, it's less than 30 minutes, and um, that seats 1,600, and we'll be at, our goal is to blow that those doors off. And the best part to me of Bishop Burns was, he came and spoke, and his, his talk was fantastic. And I thought he was, we were told he, he had to leave right afterwards. <laughs> and so he sits through the next speaker, and then we have a rotation of adoration, so he's, he kneels through the first uh, segment of adoration, and then I see him leaving. So I thought, well, I'll go out and I'll thank him and say goodbye. Well, no, he wasn't leaving. He went over to the vendor area for the next two rotations and just talked to people. And there ended up being a line. Uh, where's is Keith? No, Keith, I saw him up there, I don't think. Um, he was telling me there was a line there and everybody was getting things blessed by the bishop, but he talked. To everybody he didn't leave till one o'clock and uh, he was a shepherd of men and he is on fire to help us make this a movement um, not a conference and uh, um, we've been inspired because we went to um, we're, Rick and I and our group is part of a National Catholic Men's Leadership Association which is people from all over the United States and it was started by Father Larry Richards and Deacon Harold. And uh, it's pretty, the weekend we went to was pretty intense. We got another one coming up in June. But the, the goal when we were there and we met the guys from Milwaukee, Milwaukee they pull 3,500 people every, every year to their conference. And to hear the, the things that different people do and how, and the reason they do is they're a movement, not a conference. And they promote things like this rosary and donuts something in every parish that gets men more involved in their faith so thank you for being part of it it was a great conference roger uh, 110 parishes out of how many in the two dioceses do you know it's about 140 140 yeah 30 parishes? 145 yeah how do we get those other 30 involved well that we are that's a great well, question we're send all you guys well, out we're, we're, it's called ambassadors and we're our objective is to get ambassadors in every parish that are promoting men's ministry and promoting this and we had um, actually had three dioceses there we had uh, people from <coughs> fort worth dallas and tyler uh, um, and little rock we had one from little rock and one from bay city one texas from and one from minnesota, minnesota. So, minnesota. So, <laughs> thank you Anybody else have any comments about the conference? Um, yeah, Kyle. Kyle does.
few things uh, that uh, really hit me on the conference, and I'm going to encourage those who did not go, but those who were there on Fa Father Pacwa's talk. To me, it was very impactful from a societal, uh, from a culture standpoint. It was really, to me, not a huge, like, religious talk. It was really about, here's our culture today, here's what our kids are believing, and this is why they're believing it, and this is why it's false. And I thought, you know what, my, my daughter and my son need to hear this because they're hearing everything totally different from out there. So if you were not there, get on Ralph's video, watch Father Pacwa, and send it to everybody you know that has questions about where, you know, wh why is our culture the way it is? You know, the East Coast, the Left Coast, and all the above. But it was really, really good. And um, the second thing that... Uh, Bob was mentioning in the fall, uh, for those who saw Father Manesis three years ago, he, how he was one of the best speakers the conference has ever had. Anyway, so he's going to do a, uh, he's going to be the main speaker, the only speaker on, on October 19th at Expiritus. And then he is going to do a retreat for the leadership team and ambassadors for Catholic Brothers for Christ for that day. And I've already spoke to him about it. He's very excited about it. Um, but if you uh, feel compelled, prayerfully consider, to get involved in this leadership in some way, some form or fashion, because you need to be there with Father and nieces alone just for that, but also to make a big difference. So, um, so kind of keep that in mind, you know, as you do your Lenten journey and you're going, you know, God, what do you ask me to do? Maybe this is something to get involved in because uh, it is going to be impactful. And, and um, I think that we all, as this group knows, we can make a big difference. So anyways, I'm Kyle. Kyle. Uh, um, just to kind of follow what Kyle said. So we are always looking for people to get involved with us. Um, it's a once in a month commitment at the most. We, we do conference calls, we do a lot of conference calls, things like that. So um, if you wanna get involved, do so. Um, it makes it easier for all of us if, the more, if we get more people involved. Like Don stepped up this year, came up to me and said, I, I wanna do something. I, you know, I've got some time, I wanna do something. So we put him in charge of food. He was, it was outstanding, he did an outstanding job of food. By the way, did you guys like the food at the yeah. conference? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Healthy donuts and Chick-fil-A. Yeah, so we had healthy donuts. And <laughs> well, I did, I did hear... Cool dice. It was awesome. I did, I did hear... Um, the, uh, I saw Deacon Padded. Did he leave? He just left. Okay. Well, he told me yesterday, and I wanted to tell you this. He goes... I heard so many comments from people that they even had gluten-free stuff there for them. Yeah. <laughs> that had been there in the past to go, all I got to eat was an apple. And I said, uh, I did not say what I had said at our meeting, which was incorrect. <laughs> which was, if they're gluten-free, they bring their own food. <laughs> I was wrong. So what I did say, and that's being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to tell you, thank you for... Uh, getting some gluten free and, and, and being there. And, and one other thing, uh, I mentioned the CMLA, Catholic Men's Leaders Organization. Uh, their national conference is June 21st, 22nd, 23rd in Grapevine. If you are a, uh, a leader, you don't have to be just on our leadership team, but you have to be in some sort of leadership role in any ministry. If you are, um, uh, it, it is in a very impactful weekend. Uh, Father Larry, um, uh, it's, would it be safe to say it's Father Larry boot camp? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Saying that. I mean, he starts out and you do an hour of adoration. We started out Friday night with an hour of adoration before mass, before we ate, before we had a meeting. And at that meeting he said, I normally do my holy hour at 4 a.m., but you weenies, we're gonna wait till 5 a.m. <laughs> and so 5 a.m. we're doing adoration from five to six and then mass and and he's like kneeling on 
we were in this Best Western that had seen its better days, and we're kneeling on carpet that needed to be replaced like 30 years ago, and, and huh? And, and it, we're like dying because he's kneeling on this carpet for an hour. So the next day he goes, some of y'all told me you're you're weenie, so you can sit, you know. And it's like, I mean, he just he treats you with love, but. Uh, love that you can imagine from Father Larry. So if you're a leader in any organization and you want to go to that, it's 250 bucks for the, the conference and it will be the best 250 you spend. That includes your meals. It is intense from Friday evening till Sunday. We do uh, adoration every day, mass every day. He did reconciliation. Uh, so everybody, uh, the first conference, there were 80 people from around the country and they organized it in three weeks. So this is they're expecting 250 to 300 people. The goal is to get one person from every diocese in the country to come to the in the whole object. There'll be some bishops there and and teaching. It's ta it's great teaching and stuff like that. You may want to add more to that if you want. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's more of a it's kind of so we can all share our best practices across the country. Like if if somebody's doing something in Milwaukee, we can see what they're doing to help our conference or. To help one in California, whatever. There's, I think there's, I don't know. They had probably about a hundred dioceses represented the first time. There's probably going to be about, you know, 250 this time because they're really reaching out. It's really help helpful to us too because we can hear what's working well somewhere in another conference to kind of help ours. So that's what that's all about. I want to talk a little bit about prayer because if you don't think God answers our prayers. He does. Um, about four weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had about 200 men signed up for the conference. <laughs> Literally 200 men. And we're going, we got to start scaling stuff back. We got to tell Chick fil A we don't need 800 sandwiches. We got we to gotta cut up back our printing costs, all these things that we were thinking about. And so I, I do a daily prayer with our leadership team. I send an email to our leadership team every day. And we pray, that was the main thing, is pray for people come to the conference. Well, it, it worked because we, 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 we oversold the conference, you know, even up to the last minute. So those prayers, I think, you know, prayer works. There's no question about it. The other reason I'm bringing that up is because at the conference we have this basket and people bring up their prayer requests talking about powerful prayer requests that so our team is going to take those prayers and each of us are going to pray pray for like 30 or 40 of those prayers before, all up until the next conference so that'll keep you know those prayers alive uh, going back plus I'm every day I'm adding a new prayer request from that those cards so prayer is an awesome awesome thing uh, if nothing else from that conference you know, prayer is what I get out of it. So, just just a wonderful thing. So, anybody else got any more comments about Ralph? I'd Ralph. like to have come, come around in the no, camera. No, I'll no, wait, a <laughs> wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, I went on there. <laughs> step back. Wait a minute. Take four pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to step back a little bit. Here. All I got one, more. one more. All right. One more. One more. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wanted to call Rick, um, Bob, and Kyle up to the front so I could get them on camera because these men are your leaders. These are the true men that you can follow in their footsteps for how much time they actually devote to this and they all have full-time jobs and families. And you wouldn't believe it because I see what they do. I see their heart and their love for God and our Blessed Mother. And I see their love for the men, especially those that are lost. and. You just don't really realize how much stuff those guys do, how much money they take out of their own pockets to invest. And Matt, too, he's there with them. And these guys are truly leaders of men. They're the type of men that we want to help develop, especially in this group, because you think about it, for Catholic Brothers for Christ, uh, for CHIRP, these are all men that have been leaders in those particular groups. And if you look at them over eight, ten years, how many men they've impacted and um, chirp all the way from chirp one all the way to chirp 19 and so we need more leaders like that to step up and be involved and follow in the footsteps of these amazing leaders 
All the glory goes to God. Ralph, I appreciate it, but we don't do it for recognition. I guarantee it. This is not, you know, we're just, we're just trying to get people to heaven. And you know, when I when I did my witness and chirp, I, one of the things I said was, my job is to get my family and to heaven. I mean, that is our job as men. It's also to get you guys there as well, all of us. So we're all in this together. This is, we're you know, God's called us to do that. That's why we do this. And he's called all of us to do this. So. You know, I'm, I don't know, I don't know what else to say, but it's one of that we can do. It only happens because of you guys. It's not us, it's God. Yeah, God's just working through us. <laughs>